Jeevam Tadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Visha Kambitam Scha Tuma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Here Vishesa Sunyavari Pastyakya De Sitarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Tinamine Sri Varshabana Vidavi Daya Tekripa Daya Krishna Sambandha Vigyanam Daya Nepa Vavena Maha Adur Ojwala Premadhyā Sri Rupanuga Bhakti Da Sri Gauda Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namastate Namaste Gauravani Sri Murtaye Ginatarine Rupanuga Virudapa Siddhanta Dvanta Harine Namo Gaudiki Shodaya Saksad Vairagi Murtaye Viparlamba Sambo Day Padambu Jayate Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Sachidananda Namine Gaura Shakti Sarupaya Rupa Nuga Virayate Gaura Vibhava Bhumes Tvam Nirdisesa Sajara Priyam Vaishnava Sarva Bhuma Sri Jaganataya Te Namaha Vansha Kalpa Thru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Paheva Cha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaha Namaha Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padaya Te Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namari Gaura Triste Namaha Pancha Tattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Svarupa Kam Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Sivasani Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namos Tate Tapta Kanshin Jayatam Siddhatam Pangor Mama Manda Matir Gati Matsarasya Padambo Jo Radha Madana Mohano Divya Vrindan Vrindavanya Kalpa Drumad Sri 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 Ratnagar Singhasana Sto Sri Sri Radha Sri Lagavindu Devo Kustali B. Sevya Mani Smarari. Sri Mad Rasada Sadam B. Bamsi Vata Tatastita Hav Karsan Venu Hidar Gopi Gorpi Natha Katena Maha. Taptakan Shinagodan Gi Radhe Brin Davane Swadi Vikabanu Suji Devi Pranamami Hari Priye. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, we would request everyone to turn their videos on. We request all the devotees to just turn their video on. They don't have to come on personally, just turn their video on. Yeah, like that. Thank you. Vishwapavani, Sukhavaha, who else? Everyone turn their video on. Yeah. Vishringalila, Kalakanti. Yeah, it's nice to have an audience to see who I'm talking to. <laughs> Otherwise, I just look at a, a blank screen and I'm thinking, I guess there's people out there. 
it's nice. You know, this gives it more of a class type of atmosphere. Pelicanti, can you turn your video on? Shingalila. Okay. So today's topic is Let's see a uh, verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, third chapter, verse number seventeen. Two, three, seventeen. Okay. Are you are you hariti vipu sam udan astam chayana so tasyarte yat shino nita utamas loko vartaya translation. Uh, with both the rising and the setting, the sun decreases the duration of life uh, for everyone. Let's see. Yeah. Go down the page a little bit. No, the other way. Go down, yeah, okay. Both rising and the setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all good personality of Godhead. Okay, so now, purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Let's see here. This verse indicates correctly confirms the great importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with the Supreme Lord by acceleration of devotional serving. Time and tide wait for no man. So the time indicated by the sunrise and the sunset will be usefully wasted if such time is not properly utilized for realizing identification of spiritual values. Even a fraction of the duration of life wasted cannot be compensated by any amount of gold. Human life is simply awarded to a living entity so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. A living being, especially the human being, is seeking happiness because happiness is the natural situation of the living entity. But he is vainly speaking happiness in the material atmosphere. A living being is constitutionally a spiritual spark of the complete whole and his happiness can be perfectly perceived in spiritual activities. The Lord is the complete spirit whole and his name, form, quality, pastimes, entourage, and personality are all identical with him. Once a person comes in contact with any of the above mentioned energies of the Lord through the proper channel of devotional service, the door to perfection is immediately opened. In the Bhagavad Gita 240, the Lord has explained such contact in the following words. Endeavors in devotional service are never baffled, nor is there failure. A slight beginning of such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears. As a highly potent drug injected intravenously acts at once on the whole body, the transcendental topics of the Lord injected through the ear by the pure devotee of the Lord can act very efficiently. Oral realization of the transcendental message implies total realization. 
just as fructification of one part of the tree implies fructification of all other parts. This realization for a moment in the association of the pure devotees like Sukadeva Goswami prepares one's life completely for eternity. And thus the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life. Inasmuch as he is constantly busy in the devotional service of the Lord, purifying his existence. Death is a symptom of material infection of the living entity being. Only due to material inf infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the law of birth, death, disease, and old age. A materialist way of pious activities like charity is recommended in the Sri Tishasas as quoted by Vishwanar Chakra. Money given in charity to a suitable person is guaranteed bank pilots in the next life. Such charity is recommended to be given to a Brahmana. If the money is given in charity to a non-Brahmana without Brahminical qualification, the money is returned in the next life in the same proportion. If it is given in charity to a half-educated Brahman, even, the money, even then the money is returned double. The money is given in charity to a learned and fully qualified Brahmana. The money is returned a hundred and a thousand times. And if the money is given to a Veda Paraga, one who has actually realized the path of the Vedas, it is returned by unlimited multiplication. The ultimate end of Vedic knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaisya, Savair, Aham Eva Vedyo. There is guarantee of money being returned if given in charity, regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental message of the Lord is the perfect guarantee for eternal life, for returning back home, back to Godhead. Mud Dharma Gatvam Purnam Janmana Vidyate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. A devotee's old age and disease is the, in the present life is an impetus for such guaranteed eternal life. So we're getting a few interesting topic here, but essentially those who are engaged in devotional service are not affected by the material energy. So sometimes we say that, well, I, those who are engaged in devotional service are transcendental, they're protected, they're unaffected by the material energy. So that is not simply a um, statement to inspire people to get involved in devotional service. It's a factual principle which illustrates the power of devotional service. The more one is absorbed in the activities of devotional service, the more one is experiencing freedom from all material miseries. Now here, the principle of duration of life, the word ayur, ayur means duration of life. It comes, we also hear the name Ayurveda, so Ayurveda means that science that, that teaches you the duration of life. And we know it as medicine or various types of health uh, uh, regimens that allow us to live without disease. But when one is on the spiritual platform, one is engaged in devotional service, and is absorbed in such service, then one is free from all the sufferings and miseries of the material energy, even death. Now you might say, well, is how do you actually overcome death? Is it possible to overcome death? We don't have any examples. Well, what that means is you have to understand that this material body that we inhabit is not a living, organism. It has, it's just a machine, that's all. 
just like you have a car. Well, that car has various parts and it works in a certain way, but what enunciates or energizes the part is the, the driver. And the more the driver knows how to operate the vehicle, the more the vehicle operates at his maximum, maximum capacity. So in the same way, the driver is different than the, the vehicle. Same way, the body is different from the person. So this material body will vanish at some time because at one point one is destined to live in this body for a certain amount of time. But one engaged in devotional service transcends all material destinies, predictions, and karmic influences. And the material body actually becomes transcendental also. Prabhupada would use the example of putting the iron rod into the fire. Keeping that iron rod in the fire means that that, that iron rod will lose its metallic effect and take on an, a different effect. And what is that effect? It'll become an object for burning. And so now it is no longer an iron rod. It works like fire. So in the same way, when one is engaged fully in devotional service, because unless one is engaged fully in devotional service, one will not find the happiness and satisfaction that devotional service can offer. One may experience some relief from material suffering, and that is automatically given by any endeavor in devotional service. But complete, complete transcendence or complete uh, protection and complete insulation from the effects of the material energy only come when one is fully absorbed in devotional service. And of course, that full devotional service awakens one's awareness of Krishna and brings one in association of Krishna through that intense service. So um, when we speak of devotional service, we say we don't, there is no, there is in the Shastras, the, in the third canto, they give what is called various times of mixed devotional service. But mixed devotional service cannot satisfy the soul. So by pum sam paro dharmo yato bhaksi ahoksaje, uhoi tuki apriyata yayat must supersede the tea. Um, what is that? Ahoi tuki apriyata. Ahoi tuki means without personal desires, and priyata means without cessation. So that is devotional service when it, one is engaged completely, fully in the activities of devotional service with no material motivations or no material aspirations. Then one can transcend the modes of material nature. As it says, Brahma Bhuta, Prasanatmana Totati Nakangsati, Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu, Mad Bhakti Lavate Param. So in that in that particular verse, it explains that one is no longer affected or within the influence of the material energy. And here it says, the rising of the setting of the sun decreases uh, the duration of life, except one who utilizes the time by discussing. It seems to be contradictory. Rising in the setting of sun will decrease, but when it says decrease the duration of life, it means the conception of my existence in the material world. But what we're speaking about is that when one's on the transcendental platform, and Prabhupada will give the example, when one is engaged in devotional service, whether wherever they are, they do the same thing. And he used a very simple and easy example. 
And there's a machine, it's called the Deki machine, D-E-K-H-I. A Deki machine is a wheat husking machine. And this is used as an example in one verse that if you take a wheat husking machine and you bring it to the heavenly planets, it will do what? It'll husk wheat. You bring it to the lower planets, it will husk wheat. You, wherever you bring it, it does the same function. That is a devotee. Wherever the devotee is, they will engage in devotional service. So the atmosphere that one is in becomes somewhat superfluous or even non-existent to the activity of devotional service. So a devotee will not be so much influenced or not at all influenced by where they are as long as they're engaged in devotional service. And as it says here, one lives forever because duration of life doesn't mean the duration of his body because his body is not the principle of existence. It's simply a, 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 the, an apartment where you live in while you're in this material world. It's your, it's your apartment. Some of us have a, you know, a nice apartment and some of us don't have such a nice apartment, but it's an apartment. It's a place where the soul is residing within this material world. But it, it doesn't matter because the department, that apartment has no influence upon the devotee when, when, when then they're engaged nicely in devotional service. So here, and then we go to the actual point. What is that transcendent, transcendental activities? To utilize time discussing the topics of the all good personality of Godhead. Um, Bodhiantas pradasparam kantiantas chibam nityan tushyanticha ramanticha. The thoughts of my devotees dwell in me. Their lives are surrendered unto me. They derive great satisfaction and bliss and enlightening one another and conversing about me. So this is the activities of devotees. Devotees should think how we can get together and talk about Krishna. We get together and we talk about family matters and we get together and talk about business matters and we get together and talk about how's the health and we get together and we talk about what's happening with the latest COVID atmospheric uh, you know, calculations and we get, to cal we get together and we talk about so many topics. But the idea for devotional life is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord because that those glories are so sweet. Satam prasangam mamavirya sambido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata na joshina tad pavarga vartmani ratir bhaktir anukamishyati Kamisyati here. This verse explains that satam prasangam, when the devotees come together, what is it? Bhavanti Ritkarna. It's so sweet to hear and chant the glories of the, the Lord that the ear becomes purified and the ear, ear become, becomes the source of receiving the nectar. And it away when that sound vibration travels through the ear down into the heart, it, it, it charms the heart and the mind becomes joyful just to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Now this is this is the medicine in this age. Uh, because in this age there is a disease, and that disease is called. In Sanskrit, it's called bhavarog, material hankerings. Everyone is hankering for something. Any, anyone in any situation of life, no matter what they have, they are never satisfied. 
if Prabhupada would use the example of a millionaire, he has a million dollars, he wants 10 million. If another person has a thousand dollars, they want 10,000. If a person has so many, uh, so many friends, they want to keep adding more friends on. So no one's ever satisfied with whatever they have. They always want more of the same or they want something different. Now, that is the nature of material life. But for a devotee, one can be satisfied simply by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. But in the association with other devotees, this is where it makes it sweet. We can read the books and we should read the books. We can... Uh, study the books and that is also highly highly recommended but when we do it in association with devotees it becomes so uh, relishable and something that is relishable um, we say there is a relish i don't know if you uh, are familiar but there's one food stuff that's on the market it's called relish it's more like something you spread onto your food to make it even taste even better. And it's very nice. I think it's made out of cucumbers and various types of flavors, which really enhance whatever else you're eating. So relish means to take the taste of what you are tasting to a higher level. So that is that the taste that comes from hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, because the Lord's glories, as we hear in this particular verse, as explained in the purport, are non-different from the Lord. His name, his form, qualities, pastimes, entourage, pers personality, everything are all the same, identical with him. So Prabhupada says that we open the door to one of these departments of Krishna's manifestation. And then we're actually opening the door to pure devotional service. And then Prabhupada talks in a very concessionary way. Even if you don't complete devotional service in this life, of course, one would like to, and one should try by all means to perfect their life. But say, say due to circumstances or something, one falls short of perfection. Then, as, as it says, in endeavors and devotional service are never baffled, nor failures. There's no failure. And get, it destroys the great ocean of fear. And it... Uh, that message brings satisfaction to the ear and to the heart. And as the sun robs one of the duration of life, except for those who hear and chant the glories of the Lord. It's not something theoretical. It, it's an experience. When you're hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, you lose any sense of time. You have become, you enter into the zone of the timeless. In the spiritual world, there is no time. Everything exists in its pure spiritual essence. Time is that element that moves things from one situation to another, changing whatever it touches. But in the spiritual world, no time is there. Everything is in its pure spiritual essence. And even while we're in the material world, we can experience this element of timelessness through engaging in devotional service. Then it doesn't matter who you are or what is your age or what is your physical situation. If you engage in chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord, then you are free. You are off on the pure spiritual platform. In other words, you are free. Material world means restrictions, the modes of material nature. The word mode is translated into the word guna. Guna means, refers to the mode of material nature, but guna has another meaning, and that means rope. 
So that's synonymous with the word uh, guna, means rope also. So what does the modes of material nature do? They tie one as a rope ties one up in different ways. There is the hard knot, which is the mode of ignorance. There is still another hard knot, a little less mode of passion. And then the hard, then a more or less a looser knot, but still a knot in the mode of goodness. But when one who is engaged, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, because Krishna is all attractive, his glories are also all attractive, one's mind becomes purified, one's heart becomes happy, and one is no longer under the influence of the mighty, which pushes one in different directions to try to uh, find happiness where there is no happiness. Uh, this, and then Prabhupada, in the very last paragraph, he talks about um, charity. It's kind of interesting how he changes. Uh, he talks about pious activities like charity. And then there is the, what is called, there is a thing called Dana Veda or a section of the Vedas that talk about what is the benefits of giving in charity. So here we can see, depending on the recipient of the charity, the person who is the giver of the charity receives various types of benefits. And if it says here, one who gives to a Veda Paraga, one who is factually realized the past of the Vedas, that charity is returned unlimitedly. So uh, there are some people who misuse this particular part of the Vedas and look for ways to make more money by giving in charity to various organizations. Because they know giving in charity means that you get a return to it. But then again, in the Shastras, it talks about charity in the different modes. So charity in the mode of ignorance is to give it the, the wrong time to the wrong person. And the charity of the mode of passion is to give with the desire to get. And charity in the mode of goodness is simply to benefit the person you give it to. And transcendental charity has takes on a whole different definition. What does that mean? What is the transcendental charity? Transcendental knowledge. When one gives transcendental knowledge, that is the highest form of charity. Why? Because it awakens in them the direction of pure devotional service. They have the tools to move forward in the path of devotional service. So the highest form of charity is to give knowledge of devotional service, knowledge of our relationship with Sri Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll... Uh, Conclude here, this is a very interesting verse. It's a really a fundamental verse that teaches us the, the importance of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. One reaches the stage of timelessness. And it's a matter of consciousness that one experiences this song. Okay, Hare Krishna. Everyone turn on their videos. Thank you, Maharaj, for this class. Thank you so much. It was a nice verse. Uh, Maharaj, I have a small question. The world starts with the sun uh, along with the rising and setting of sun. It in, decreases the duration of life, but it doesn't affect the pure devotee. But how is it connected to the charity topic, which is mentioned in the last per, uh, last paragraph in the purport? I didn't understand that. Mm, it seems it, it refers to pious activities, and Prabhupada chooses this particular aspect of pious activities, giving in charity, and the pious act, uh, the idea of charity, is supposed to increase the benefit of life. In other words, one is getting, uh, those who are charitable find that life is nice. 
I mean, if they're least, if they're charitable, the mode of goodness, then they more or less are offering something to someone else for the benefit of someone else, even if it's material, it's materially benefiting. So that's pretty much one of the highest forms of material activities, giving in charity. But even that takes a subordinate position to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada was just illustrating that this is the best that the materialist can do is, is to perform charitable work. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Also, I forgot the point which you mentioned that transcendental knowledge giving is the best charity. So that is also, that's how also it, it is connected, right? Yeah, well, that's, that's spiritual. That's not material. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. So I request devotees, if there are any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Let's see, we have a nice group to head today. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada, all glory to Thank you for the lovely class. Thank you for the lovely class, Guru Maharaj. Um, I have a question regarding the charity. What you mentioned, Guru Maharaj. So, um, for the devotee, the devotional service is better than charity, or charity should be done as well. Um, ch charity should not be given up. Yeah. But then again, if you're engaged in full devotional service, that is the highest charitable work. Because when you serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the source of all existence, that, that service benefits not only you, but it pleases Krishna, but it extends itself outward to all, to everything else. It's just like when it rains, it rains where it's needed, but then again, it rains, it rains on the rocks where it's not needed. It rains on the ocean where it's not needed. So everyone, everyone feels the effects of the rain. In the same way, when, when you're performing devotional service, it extends itself out and benefits all living entities, not just you or not just pleasing Krishna. Krishna is the root. He's connect, everyone is connected to Krishna and everything is connected to Krishna. So when Krishna is pleased by one's devotional service, there is auspiciousness in the life of, of everyone. Although people, some people can't recognize it. <laughs> So do, how do we know that we are on the right track, Guru Maharaj? Like we are doing, offering the devotional service, are we doing it rightly? Or is there any way we can make out? We are making any offenses? Or? Well, try to follow the protocol. There is a way to do everything. Just mm -hmm. like there's a way to cook, right? So you cook, right? So if you want to cook a particular preparation, and you want to get, get it to taste in a certain way, you follow the instructions on how to do it. And so in mm -hmm. the same way in our devotional service, there's a way to do everything. So follow that recommended way as given by the acharyas, by given in, by Krishna and the Shastras. And if there's some question, then ask the question. But then, <clears throat> So I know, like with the cooking, you you give the example, Guru Maharaj, at least we can taste and see it is big or come out nice or not. But here, how, what is the way to measure our devotional path is right? Because wow. sometimes we are so materialistic that it's like we're doing it like, I don't know whether it is going on right. Direction. Well, if you're attached to the results, 
you may not experience the happiness of devotional service. But if you're doing it to simply to please Krishna, <clears throat> and it becomes pleasing to Krishna, and then as Prabhupada says, when he was asked the same question, if Krishna is pleased, you are pleased. There's a, there's a class of philosophers who turn it around and say, if you're pleased, then Krishna's pleased. So do whatever you can to please yourself, and that pleases God. But that is just some kind of some kind of cheating. Please Krishna, because he is the source. If you put water on the on the on the leaves and the branches, the tree may still die. But if you mm -hmm. put water on the root, the tree will flourish. Krishna, another name for Krishna is Mula, means root. He's the root of all existence. So everyone is connected to Krishna. But the awareness of that connection is devotional service. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Sukhapaha. You have such a nice I, background. Gurmaj, sorry, I'm driving, so I can't turn on the camera, Gurmaj, but am I audible? I can hear you. Please accept my humble obeisances. I'll go to Prabhupada, I'll go to your lotus feet. Gurmaj, um, thank you for the class, but one question I have is that uh, between rising sun and setting sun, the duration of life is decreased, but for a person engaged in hearing the glorification of Krishna, uh, there's timelessness. But what about, if, even if somebody is engaged in hearing the glorification of Krishna, but what about the offenses? Somebody uh, does some offenses, small or big. But is the timelessness factor still acting on them or? or? Well, they don't get the full benefit. They can't experience the benefit. So you mean, if you're hearing and chanting in the glories of the Lord, what could be the offense? Uh, I mean, like if, uh, if let's say that uh, uh, the devotee is hearing and chanting religiously, like chanting 16 rounds, hearing the Bhagavad Gita, reading the books, but then there is an offense on the part of the other devotee. Uh, and there is some judgment, like there's so many examples in front of us in the movement from over the years. So then what happens? Um, I'm not sure I understand completely. Uh, I understand, and it's c c you're correct, that when you hear and chant the, the holy name of the Lord, you have to avoid the offenses. And if you don't avoid the offenses, you minimize the progress. And if you have too many offenses, you make no progress at all, even though you're chanting. Uh, but so when it comes nice when it comes to hearing hearing like uh, the topics about the all good personality of Godhead, all you have to do is read them from the shastras, and if you read them, then you can memorize them. And if you come together and you're speaking from a point of memory, then uh, one should just try to repeat exactly as one heard, and that one should not try to create something different in the narration of Krishna's pastimes. So you can either read it and then everything is exactly the way it is. But if you read it, remember it, and then repeat it, it should be done the way you heard it and not something different. So that Thank may you be, very much. there might be a slight discretion in the principle of hearing and chanting when it comes to Krishna's pastimes. But Krishna's pastimes are so sweet that, uh, that they seem to overshadow any discrepancies. Uh, and what about the offenses that we do to other living entities or devotees? Well, uh, there's a reaction for that, yeah. You're, if you're committing offenses to other devotees and then you're also hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, 
you will not get the benefit of that hearing and chanting. And we have to avoid the offenses. So that, so that means this, uh, by the rising sun and the setting sun, the duration of life will keep on decreasing and there will be no timelessness. If yeah, that, the principle is there. The principle is there, but you can always over just like you can, uh, you can put a cloud in front of the sun, or the sun can the cloud can go in front of the sun, and the sun is still there, but the cloud seems to obscure the presence of the sun. So we can obscure the effects of our hearing and chanting by committing offenses. We'll, we'll still get some benefit because it's a transcendental activity, but because of the offenses, the, uh, the experience will, be, will not be there. The happiness that comes with hearing and chanting will be, will be minimized and maybe even not at all experienced if one is committing offenses to the, the, if they're committing offenses to the devotees, that is the most severe type. Committing offenses to the holy name, committing offenses to the deity of the Lord. These are less severe, but they also block the happiness that we could get by the activities we perform. So the idea is keep performing the activities and very carefully understand what the offenses are and at the same time, be very diligent in avoiding those offenses. And if you continue in that way, then after some time, you'll be, you'll be tasting the happiness of, of uh, Krishna Kata. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Um, is uh, is Shrimati? She's there. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. It's always to share. Glory to the Prophet. Um, so I want to announce my schedule. Maybe some of the devotees who live in America will be able to attend some of these classes. Yes, so Guru. here, yeah, I'm going to give you my schedule for the next two weeks if I can. So today uh, I'm here and uh, tomorrow night in Brooklyn Temple, I give a class at 7 p.m. here in the temple in the Lotus Room. On Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening, I'm at the, uh, the, at the uh, Bhakti Center in uh, New York, the other side of New York, well, not the other side, but it, in uh, near 26th Second Avenue in that area of the Bhakti Center. And um, that's on seven o'clock on Wednesday night. On Thursday morning, and uh, there's a Zoom call with the devotees from the Bhakti Center. I give the Bhagavatam class starting at, I believe eight o'clock in the morning. Guru Maharaj, uh, sorry to interrupt Guru Maharaj, but uh, Thursday morning we have Bhakti Sangha class with Charlotte devotees, 7.20 a.m. Eastern time. Oh, <laughs> thank you for reminding me. So there's a conflict in schedule right now. Yeah. So let's, let's move uh, the uh, Charlotte people again to Friday. <laughs> But uh, one more thing, Guru Maharaj, yesterday, Krishna Namadas Prabhuji, he said that you are uh, giving class for them like 6.30 in the morning, uh, Bhagavatam class for New Jersey devotees. That's on Thursday? Friday, Friday. Thursday. But that's, that's not Thursday Friday. morning, that's Friday yeah, morning. That's Friday morning. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Friday. Oh, yeah, so that will come. To, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I need a manager here. <laughs> Why do you want to manage this mess? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to give it you, you can find a manager or maybe if you feel brave enough, you can try to do it yourself. So I have to do the two, uh, the Bhakti Center, Wednesday night and Thursday morning. 
Thursday night, I met Central Jersey. Okay, Thursday night. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, he's Central in Jersey there. Temple. I'll be giving class at the temple. I think it's, I'm not sure, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And Friday morning, also class at Central Jersey Temple. Yes. So that means we're going to have to move the uh, Charlotte. We can't move the Charlotte thing. We can move it to Saturday morning. It's good, Manish. I'll ask her. Yeah. Saturday night, I'm in New Haven, Connecticut, mm -hmm. at uh, Srinivas Acharya's place for a Sangha there. Mm -hmm. New Haven, Connecticut, and then um, Sunday, the Sunday feast class at the Hartford Temple, and I think it's their new temple, and I'm not sure exactly the location. Mm -hmm. You can check with Srinivas or Biari or try to find out. Monday, <clears throat> I fly to Dallas, and then... I'm in Dallas Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I guess there'll be some classes centered around uh, the temple during that time, but I don't have any schedule right now. Yes, good match. Yeah, we are uh, thinking of planning something for it for much. Thank you. And uh, on Friday, uh, I plan not confirmed yet, but I might be in Denver on Friday if that and that's not fixed yet. So that's as far as I can give right now. These are some of the classes that devotees can, if they're in the area, they can attend some of these classes, such as Connecticut and New Jersey classes. Mm -hmm. So Thursday night and Friday morning, all they are in person classes, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, they're at. The at, temple. The temple, at the temple, yes. Yeah, in Central Jersey Temple. Mm -hmm. Yes, good night. I'm not sure exactly of the times. Uh, I can wait. I can actually give you the times right now. Let me just go. Uh, I'll give you the times right now. So. Uh, Let's see. I don't have any times yet. Thursday evening. Thursday evening is it's at seven. Starts at seven p.m. I'll find out with that Prabhuji Guru Maharaj. Yeah, seven p.m. for sure. That's sure. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And and the Bhagavatam class starts at 6.30 on Friday morning. Yes, good morning. yeah. That's Eastern Standard Time. Yes, good morning. Okay. All right, I need a manager. <laughs> Somebody to manage my chaos here. Yes, good morning. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, take time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord because this is where Krishna consciousness really is where you can find Krishna. As Krishna says himself, I'm not in the hearts of the yogis. I'm not in the, I'm not in the Vaikuntha planet. I'm there wherever my devotees are chanting my glories. Krishna says that directly. So don't look for Krishna any other place. <laughs> That's where you'll find him. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. For your nice class time in association. Thank you, Srimati. I thank you, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sukavaha, Prem Kishori, Swaha, Swaha Devi. Swaha, yesterday we were chanting your name like crazy. 
I saw, I saw initiation. You, did you see the initiation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we gave, we gave initiation to a very young devotee. She's only 75 years old. <laughs> Vishwapamani. And who else do we have here? Vishnu Priya, the famous Vishnu Priya. Okay, and then we have Nishringa Leela, who's absorbed in Lord Nishringa Dev. Susanna, who's somewhere in the place called Hungary. And Radha Vinodini, she's also somewhere in Hungary. <laughs> Madhavananda, we don't see him. I know he's there. He, He's hiding out. Namrata is also there. Oh, there's Madhavananda. He looks like a, a looks like he's Islamic today. <laughs> Hi, Krishna Guru. Please accept my humble obeisances. No, I'm I'm at work, you know. Oh, oh okay, uh, okay. Assalamualaikum. Yeah, Asalaam alaykum. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> nice to see you. Your work looks exciting. <laughs> well, it's a clean room, so not any particles can be there. So we are only all in the white suit. Good, good. You look clean in the green room. That's nice. <laughs> and we got Raghu over there. Is that the same? That's the famous Raghu who's, who just gave birth to Krishna Balaram. Is that the same one? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yes, it's me. Please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glory to the He's he's he manifested Krishna Balaram in person just recently. Oh, Krishna, only with your message, Guru Maharaj. Well, I didn't do anything. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me involved in this one. <laughs> And so thank you all for coming online today and we'll see you. Um, he asked Srimati when I'll see you again because I'm not sure <laughs> she knows that more than I do. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. My obeisances to all the devotees. Vanchakopa, Trubhischa, Kripasana, Vedicha, Kitanam, Bhavanagyo. Maha. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.